coming to the top of the morning. We got ourselves an old crank 1980 Junior, and as you may have surmised, it's their take on a JCM 800 circuit, isn't it? Yes. Let me uh, let me give it a little spoiler. Now, I've already put in a lot of work here. Was not switching channels. Um, excessive background hum and buzz, along with a plethora of other small and annoying issues that, when combined, created a very poor user experience. Maybe I can get into that. But um, she's warming up. Uh, currently, stop trying to look at my reflection. 80 volts. We are sitting at 116 volts coming out of that wall. Let's get her up to 120 here. Okay. And see what's cooking. Literally. What is cooking? So, uh, current limiting is off. And I am running a 100 hertz triangle wave through the input. Why? Well, because you can actually hear all the little bass stuff. You can hear all the EQ stuff. Treble. Hear that? She needs a little more cleaning, obviously, on the faceplate. But we got a lot of dirty stuff off there. Watch that low end roll up. See that? That's fat. Let's get a square wave. It's much more apparent. Although a little annoying, there's your sine wave. Who's doing that? I just heard a little poppy pop, didn't I? Oh, input jack wasn't seated. Pardon me. A little rookie move, huh? All right, and we want to keep it on the sine wave because we're going to move over to the overdrive channel where there's plenty of square wave to go around. All controls are off. Channel switching is now functional. Get into that later, maybe in another video. Let's get the master up where we have some hiss. <laughs> square wave dictate the sensitivity and effectiveness of the other controls here on the EQ. That's just scooped. The mid-range is effectively null. Let's try it at 50%. Mid-range is uh, partially effective. There it is. So as you turn the sweep up, it's essentially scooping the mids. Okay. Guess we've had enough of that. Awesome. I like it. All these guys go back down. And let's see. Where are we? Nice. So it's a little counterintuitive because the uh, overdrive channel is uh, flipped around. It's, it's sitting on the left-hand side because uh, the cab, uh, rather the, the chassis, is uh, inverted inside of the, the head shell. So, um, yeah. So this, uh, this amp had a lot of corrosion, like in a lot of dust. It was just sort of stored improperly or not uh, stored in the best way. Um, some liquid spills uh, were apparent on the interior. Um, the jacks, especially the effects loop jacks, were heavily corroded. They're now 
uh, noise free. Um, input jack was heavily corroded as was the foot switch jack and then the pots as you can imagine. Uh, probably the most heavily corroded uh, tube sockets I've dealt with in a long time. So we'll get into the, uh, the power section next. Uh, it is stable but maybe it's not ideal at the moment. So a pretty simple layout and there you can see the you can see this phase inverter tube handing off the signal to the decoupling caps and then boop got your 220k's right here and you have your uh, your bias supply here feeding your power tubes and a, a pretty a simple layout kind of a clever design where they have a keyhole type arrangement to secure the circuit board so you, you basically loosen up all the hardware on the opposite end, and then you just slide it out. Pops out of the bigger hole. And that's about it for now. So um, one, of, one of the main issues, sorry, um, something I'll deal with, because I did ohm this out already, is all of the grounds have between one to like 20 ohms of resistance between themselves and the chassis. So that's a that's a no-no. And including the grounding plane on the other side of these pots here. One of them measures 10, the, uh, the gain control measures 10. So I'm uh, assuming that that's where some of the noise is coming from outside of the fact that the layout isn't the most ideal. So there are better ways to run grounds um, I'll, I'll test to see if this is ferrous or not, and um, if I could run some uh, chassis solder joints, then I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll turn the sucker around. All right, well, I've got time for a quick one, I guess. This amp can be bright, so you may find yourself running the treble fairly low. <laughs> Sam's dead quiet now. Rolling that up here. Single coils there. Really nice clean sound. channel let's see it'd be nice if the the labels were on the top side
control in the rear. Completely forgot about that. Let's get that turned down a bit. Wow. Incredibly bright amp. And that's just the noisy room here. Check that out. Moving around. single coil there or a humbucker into a single coil rather just super noisy room here lots of uh, RF and switching power supply funk but anyway there she is now pretty nice little amp for that kind of sound let's get this tuned up here oh, it slipped all the way down to see the sea Play a cold guitar and that's what you get. Oh, mama. That's it for today. Bye.